So yesterday's game is a great example of what happens when you go into a game thinking that it'll come easy, thinking that you'll win. Play the intro. Yeah, I actually think we're going to hit this game hard and we're going to come out firing. I think Collingwood will win by 38 points. Dugowie has got to kick five goals upon his return. So as you can see, nothing I predicted came to fruition. Go figure. So from the get-go, we didn't look right. Walking through contests, no scoreboard pressure, inaccuracy in front of goal, and there was just an air of, yeah, it'll come to us, yeah, we're going to win about this game. So this game played out like an arm wrestle. It was neck and neck throughout, especially the last quarter. We both kicked three goals, three, and Fremantle only got that ascendancy in the third quarter when they kicked four unanswered goals. Dugoy was back in the side, back to his scintillating best, up until that last quarter where he kicked it to absolutely no one, caused a turnover, and they went through and scored a goal. We seemed to have them in the second quarter, though, kicked a few goals, kind of back to that Collingwood that we know, went into the halftime with a 13-point lead, could have been bigger if we decided to kick straight. But I guess that's the story of our season. When the third quarter started, the Pies must have been still in the bunkers, drinking their Gatorade, eating their lollies, because Fremantle came out, scored the first four goals unopposed, pretty much. And it was probably one of the worst quarters I've seen us play this year. So Freer got out to a 14-point lead in that quarter before we kicked in and thought, oh, you know, we should dig our heels in and uh, put a bit of effort up. And then we kicked the next two. We could have went into the fourth quarter with a bit of a buffer, but a selfish, unselfish act and the siren were against us. A captain's goal started our fourth quarter and it looked like we were going to get back to that fourth quarter specialist that we've been these last few weeks. But it wasn't meant to be. Freer outrun us and Walters kicked that goal with 27 seconds left and she was all but over. Likes columns are a little bit scarce today. Pendles did an outstanding job. Just keeps delivering week in, week out. One of his best seasons that I've seen him play. 29 disposals, cool, calm and collected on the ball like he usually is. Kicked two goals, one in the first quarter when we needed it, one in the last quarter when we really needed it. And he pretty much carried the midfield on his back for most of that game. In the first quarter alone, he had five score involvements, which is just a testament to how great of a player he is. Also, another luck was Maynard. This season, he's been good. Uh, he's been going under the radar. I haven't talked about him a lot. But yesterday, he was really good off that halfback, provided us a bit of run that we lacked. He went 88% with his disposals in a game where we were just dropping them and fumbling and couldn't hit any targets. To go in with his three goals was great, and more coming back from that injury and not going down injured is always a bonus. So now for the dislikes. There's gonna be a lot of dislikes, and I wanna start it off first with our tackling. Yeah, we had 50 odd tackles for that game, but we're just not sticking tackles, and the ones that we don't stick are the ones that come back to haunt us. You're seeing this little vision here, Wilson is two on one, and he just slips away, still gives a half-hearted one-arm tackle, and you know, you can't really tackle with one arm. He spins around, goes out, luckily, they don't get that goal, but still, this is the stuff that, you know, not that it doesn't win you games, it just doesn't win you the ball, and it doesn't give you the opportunity to either get a 50-50 in a ruck contest or get the free kick. There were too many times yesterday where we weren't caught ball watching, but we were caught too far up the ground. Okay. And Freer would get that cheeky one over the top into an empty 50 and score those easy goals. I just felt like our back line weren't working together as well as they usually do. There were times when they were spooling each other, there wasn't enough talk, no manning up, and like I said, that cheeky one goes over the top, and I think we conceded four or so goals because of that. So I just want to highlight this play from Varko at the end of that third quarter. When you mark it in the 50, I personally feel like you just got to go back and take that responsibility. He was only about 25 metres out. You've got to have that awareness that the game is, not that the game is on the line because it's the third quarter, but it was close to being over that third quarter. He was unselfish, trying to get that handball off, but then that's the chain of events that happens. Callum Brown apparently doesn't have a left foot because he looked at the goal, looked like he second-guessed himself, went to go back on his right, handballed over the top. Yes, Ben Reed was open, but three seconds too late. I just think that sometimes being unselfish is the selfish thing to do. Go back, take the kick. If that was the last quarter, you take 30 seconds off the clock. Yeah, best case scenario, you, we score a goal. Worst case scenario, it's a point, and we get a seven-point play. This next little bit of vision highlights this hunger for the ball that we lacked yesterday. So here, there's a 50-50 ball to be won. Brayshaw against Maynard. As you can see, Brayshaw goes for the ball hard. Maynard tries to take the player out without going for the ball. That passage of play in the last quarter is something that needs to be won. 
Maynard in that scenario needs to do everything that he can to make sure to even hold that ball up or make sure he tries to win it. Going for the player instead of the ball isn't going to win you a lot of contest. Brasher was already over the top of the ball ready to pick it up. Worst case scenario, Maynard hits Brasher and he gives away a free kick or exactly what just happened. And my last dislike in a game that was full of dislikes is the nonchalant way that we went about this game. I can't show any vision of this because one, I don't have it, and two, it was more of an aura around the ball or around the players. It seemed like we went in expecting the win against Frio, who have been playing really good football for the last month or so, and it just didn't work out for us. This is not like the 2010, 2011 team. I remember an interview, I remember listening to an interview or reading an interview where they'd go in and say, how much are we going to win by today? 80 points, 90 points, 100 points. And that 2010, 2011 team, they were good. They could do that. They were dominating the league. This team, we haven't been playing good football, but this might be the kick that we needed. One vote, Jeremy Howe. Mopped up whatever he could coming towards that back line, took a game high 11 marks, and was one of our better users with the ball. Two votes, Maynard. Love the way he went about it yesterday, besides what I just talked about, that 50-50 ball. But 88% disposal efficiency was one of our better players. Three votes, of course, Pendlebury. He led the way and he carried the team on his back for most of the game. The AFL needs to get this goal review system in check. Yes, that Michael Walter's goal wasn't a goal, it was touched. No, it didn't cost us the game. See our inaccuracy, dumb decisions. Missing from 5 meters out, missing from 10 meters out. But one day this review system will cost someone the grand final. Just to put it into a little bit of context, in the English Premier League, they've got this goal line technology that can sense a goal that's been over the line by 1.1 centimeters or a ball that wasn't over the line by 2.7 centimeters. We're out here with security camera footage and you can't tell if it's a ball or a sausage roll because it's 12 frames per second. As much as I hate to be that guy, this loss was coming. We haven't been playing our best football in the last four or five weeks, and that just showed yesterday. If we had won, it would have been like putting a band-aid over a gunshot wound. Obviously not, obviously not that extreme, but what I'm trying to say is that our win would have just covered up how we went about it and how bad we actually played yesterday. Our average footy for the last month or so was overshadowed by the fact that we were sitting pretty at second on the ladder. But hopefully this is the kick up the ass that we needed. I still think we'll go deep into September. On Wednesday, I'm going to release a video, my best 22 without all the injuries, as one of the commenters said, which is a really good idea. Who I want to see in, who I want to see out, and what I think needs to change. Until then, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets, and at least we're not Carlton. Sweep you later.